Well, glory. Good evening to you. If you hadn't got your hair tied down pretty tight, it'll blow off out of this afternoon. There is prevailing wind blowing. So grateful to be able to be here this afternoon with you, and I pray God's blessings be upon you. Would you pray for the Benny, Benny Wood family? Uh, Mr. Benny had passed away this morning about two. He'd been um, homebound and not doing well. This is uh, Ted and Karen. This is neighbors of Miss, uh, Miss Sharon and Tommy. Uh, and their daughter been taking care of him. So please pray for the Wood family. That God will just give them strength and mercy and comfort. Also continue to pray for our worry. Uh, don't lose any sleep on all this stuff we're going through. God's got it, I promise you. And uh, nothing has come into our life that hasn't come across his desk for approval. And he's promised us that uh, it will work out for our good if we love him and we're called according to his purpose. So if you uh, don't love him, you're not called, you may want to worry. But I want to encourage you to put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Verse of scripture, the 18th chapter of Luke, verse 1, it says, He was telling them a parable to show that at all times they ought to pray and not lose heart. Amen? Got to pray. Uh, Jesus can change our situation. And more times than not, he changes us in our situation to be what he would have us to be. Begin. I love you and I appreciate you joining us tonight. Now, we're going to be looking at the book of James tonight. And I pray God's blessing to be upon you in a mighty way. Again, pray for our president. Pray for our military leadership. Uh, pray for the folks in China. Pray for the folks uh, across this world that are uh, in turmoil even as we speak. And do pray that uh, God's Holy Spirit will reach out to those around about us. Pray for missionaries across this world that are standing in the gap for us uh, to be able to share the gospel with those around about them. Again, I just thank you for being with us. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you tonight for this glorious privilege we have to be in your house. Father, I thank you for the privilege to be able to be in the homes of folks via uh, electronics in such a mighty way. And Father, I thank you that you said when you come back that ever I would behold you. And Father, I don't know what all's going on with that, but I just got an inkling an idea that uh, it's going to be just like you said it would. And Father, you said you're coming back at a time that we think if not, and that would certainly be today. And Father, I pray your blessing to be upon us as we go forth. Father, we pray tonight as we look in your word together that you will apply it to our heart, give us understanding, give us wisdom. And Father, as we leave this place tonight, maybe we'll say with the psalmist, it was good for me that I was in the house of the Lord. Father, again, I pray for your blessings to be across this world, that people might look to you for the strength they need. And Father, recognize that the only way things are going to get better is we repent. We turn from our wicked ways. We acknowledge you in all of our ways, and we pray, and Lord, that you will change our circumstances. Father, just use us tonight in some way. May someone be tuned in that, that don't know you personally as their Lord and Savior. And Father, I pray that through the preaching of the word tonight that someone might come into the kingdom. What a glorious thing that would be. But Father, again, we ask you to be glorified and lifted up, and we give you the praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. My brother, please come. I also want to add to the prayer list Yvonne Ramos. He's a, he does double duty. He's a drummer for his band and drummer for uh, two or more. He had surgery today, minor surgery. and He's recovering nicely at home, so if you would, please, please remember him when you bend the knee. Uh, you know, Matthew chapter 18, it... Uh, it talks about childlike faith. You know how children are so trusting and how precious they are. And, you know, we can learn a lot from, from just watching them. Uh, I like them. I love those little children. This, uh, this morning, it was so funny at the house. My, my daughter, Victoria, she babysits a, a little girl, Quinny. And Quinny's a little over two and a half. And, and Victoria had bought her a, one of these blow up swimming pools and to take that out and see how excited she was about that pool and how excited she was about putting water in it and getting in it and all that you know and I was thinking you know you can learn a lot from seeing that you know why, why don't we get excited about praising Jesus that way why don't we get excited about telling others about Jesus that way because she, she could hardly contain herself you know and it was uh, she's just so precious, and, and, and man, when she got in that pool, she had herself a time. And you know, we we get all excited about Jesus, tell everybody, and when the Lord finally calls us home, we're gonna have us a time too. If you will, please. Thanks, Miss Jennifer. Y'all sing with me.
something to think about what Christ did for us that we might have life and life eternal he took the fall he was crucified for my sins and for your sins he shed the blood he took the stripes and I'm gonna tell you salvation is certainly free but it was not cheap we need to always remember that it cost God his own son's very life I want to share with you tonight out of James chapter 1. James is a powerful book. It's been referred to many times as the gospel in shoe leather, where the rubber meets the road, if you will. And we can know a lot of things about the Bible, but living the Christian life is a whole different story. Uh, and if you don't live it, and you're not living it out daily, you really don't have it. And I think it's something we have to look at and, and recognize, especially in these times we're in. There's some craziness going on around us. Uh, there's some good things happening. There's some scary things happening. But uh, again, God's got it all in his hands. I'm very sure of that. But in, in verse 1 of James chapter 1, it says, James, a bondservant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes who are dispersed abroad, greetings. Keep in mind that this is the half-brother of Jesus. And uh, James and uh, Jude didn't think much of Jesus and his other brothers and sisters when he was uh, doing the work God had called him to do. But here he addresses himself as a bondservant. And I'm going to tell you, you and I must be that same thing. We must serve. I had saw a little thing a guy sent to me this week. There's always leadership conferences. You don't see very many servant conferences. And that's who we are in Christ. We're servants. And if you cannot serve, if you can't be under authority, you'll never be in authority. It's just the way God's laid this thing out. But these 12 tribes were dispersed because of trouble, persecution, things falling apart around them. And they went in various ways. Thank God for that. Or we wouldn't have heard the gospel. They were dispersed abroad. And, and to recognize the fact, he says here, he says, I want you to consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials. Can I get a witness? You know, think about that. Think about what you've gone through. I, and think about the fact that many of us are in pretty good shape in so many ways. But there's some folks that haven't got anything. I mean, you know, that if, if, if the, the ladies don't serve in the, in the restaurants, they don't get tips. They don't get that $2 and a half an hour. They ain't got anything. I think about uh, young folks who are without jobs. I think about the restaurants who are suffering drastically. And I think about the, the I need my haircut, I'm telling you again. Jay, if you're watching, you need to call me. But you, you've you got to get that together. And, and you know, this lady in, in, I believe it was in Texas, who opened up her shop and said, I cannot starve, and uh, locked her up. And the judge kind of let the hammer down on her. And the, I think the governor's got involved in that. 
Uh, but we the people have got to stand up. This is the government of we the people, for the people, by the people, and uh, we got to live. And uh, we cannot uh, come under the scrutiny, I think, of those who would put us under the pressure uh, that we must do this, we must do that. Uh, you know, if you're afraid to get out of your house, stay in your house. But if you're not, get out and go do what you need to do. I work every day somewhere. Something's going on in my life. And I cannot wait because it does not come and fall on your doorstep. You know, you have to get out in there and earn it if it's going to happen to see it take place. But anyway, consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. I kid with Brother Mickey a lot. He, he works out at the gym, done that for many, many years. And, uh, bumps on his chest and his arms swole up and everything and and you you can I got a lot of friends that are that are that are muscular and they look good. I used to be that way before I got sick. But just kidding. But I've never looked that way. But look, there's a difference in this thing called endurance. You we can be muscled up and we can do this, but for the long haul. I mean we've got to stay with it. We can't quit. I think about Jesus uh, being led of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted to Satan for forty days and forty nights. I thought about the endurance that he had to have to go through that, the spiritual endurance to see it takes place. But he says again, when we encounter various trials, I don't know what you're going through, but but trials are part of life. And it's going to be such that we'll, we'll watch him work in and through us. And God, we'll see in a few minutes, he does not tempt us. These trials, more often, we'll see here in a few minutes, are brought upon ourselves because we chase after the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, or the boastful pride of life. And it carries us places we don't really want to go. And it's hard to get out of those places sometimes. He says, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance, it's going to strengthen you. Let endurance have its perfect result, that you may be perfect. You ever thought about that? The scripture says for us to be perfect. It says for us to be holy. And he talks about maturity here. Uh, we're not going to be uh, sinless until we stand before the Father in, uh, in, a, in a glorified body or in, in our spirit set free from this body. But, but we'll, we're to be perfect and we're to be whole and complete, lacking nothing. It amazes me that the scripture tells us in the book of uh, Colossians that we've been given everything that pertains to life and godliness. Everything. So we don't need to quit. We don't need to cash in our chips. Don't quit. Keep pressing on. See it happen. Let endurance have its perfect result that you may be perfect, complete, lacking in nothing. But if any of you lacks wisdom, and I do, and I'm telling you, you do. I said that little thing in Kings where the Lord had appeared to, uh, who was it he appeared to and asked him what he wanted to have? He'd give it to him. Was that Noah, Moses, you remember? Was it Solomon? And God told him, what would you have? Ask him. He said, I want wisdom to rule your people well, to be a good judge of your people. And the Lord had told him, he says, you've asked a good thing. He says, wisdom will give you riches and honor. I'm going to give you life if you'll follow me. It's a pretty good thing to do there. But I see that and recognize. But he asked for that. He said, let him ask of God who gives to all men generously and without reproach, and it will be given to him. I know that to be a fact. I hardly eat a piece of chicken. I don't ask God for wisdom. Thank you, Lord, for the chicken and the biscuit and, and what I'm drinking here. But, Lord, I need wisdom. Give me wisdom, Lord. Lead me, guide me. Show me, Lord, what you'd have me to do. So, so important. Ask him for it. You, he will not get tired of hearing from you. Uh, I, was, I was talking to uh, some folks this week, and I, I, I can't get that little sign that was up earlier this week, that uh, complete, uh, uh, repeated apologies is not repentance. I'll never forget my wife. I lay in her in her bed in a new house years ago, and I was dumb as a stick and, uh, you know, didn't understand anything about loving God or loving her really as I should. But uh, I would always get her aggravated me and, and she would not say much. And, uh, and I would tell her, I'm going to do better. And I remember so plainly, she says, I'm sick and tired of hearing you're going to do better. I'm ready to see better. What you going to do? I thought, oh. So it's so important. But if we, if we repent and we turn, we quit doing that stuff. We don't just keep staying there. And it changes everything about us if we'll see it happen. But if you like wisdom, ask God will give that to you. He will give it to all men generously and without reproach it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith without any doubting. Now how hard is that sometimes? You know, I, I remember over the years uh, I'd be under conviction about sin. And it wasn't that much. So I'm going to wait next week to see if I could get some more up. And, uh, and next week, and next week, and next month, and, and really I, I was so miserable I couldn't stand myself. 
And the importance of us staying prayed up in our, our sins, a very short list. And, uh, and so as I ask God to forgive me, and I'm so grateful for 1 John 1, 9, where he says not only will he forgive us, but he will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We'll, we'll quit, quit doing that stuff. Yeah, but don't doubt. Don't uh, fall away. You believe that God's going to do it. For he who doubt is like the surf of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. Uh, I've been on the beach on a few occasions. I've watched that come and go, sand come and go. Erosion come and go, and and I thought about that. I thought about my life, how it was to and fro, you know, and never really had any steadfastness to it until I got serious about my relationship with the Lord. For let not the man that man expect he will receive anything from the Lord. Now, how about that? I have rank center friends. I probably maybe you don't have any, but I've got a few. I mean, they're street folks, they're this folks, that folks, other folks. Preacher, need to pray for me. Well, the first thing I need to pray for you is you repent of your sin. And you become a Christian, and the Holy Spirit will reside in you, and your life will change from the inside out. But if, if listen, if we're doubting and we are continuing to do the things God tells us not to do, there's no use in us praying. Uh, God is wanting to hear from us when we get to the end of our rope and we can't go any further, and, and he will forgive us and cleanse us and put his spirit in us. But anyway, he moves on. He says, having been a double-minded man, unstable in all of his ways. Have you thought about that? You try to live in the world, you try to live in the spiritual world, and you try to live in the physical world. And it's miserable. You cannot do that. You've got to be one of the Lord said we've got to make a choice. You're either going to hate me and love the world or you're going to love me and hate the world. You can't do both. So you've got to make that choice as you go. Being double-minded, unstable in all of his ways, but let the brother of humble circumstances glory in his high position. Who are, who's that talking about? Talking about me and you. Let the brother of humble circumstances glory in his high position. What's your high position? Man, I'm in Christ. Christ is in me. It doesn't matter what I have or don't have. It doesn't matter where I'm going or not going. But the relationship I have with him is going to be the one that gets me through this thing. He let the rich man glory in his humiliation because like the flowering grass, he will pass away. The man over in the book of Luke, you remember, he had a bumper crops. He was going to tear his old barns down and give us a new barn because he had done so good. You remember Nebuchadnezzar uh, over there and he says, look what I've done. Over and over, and God put a little something on him. He crawled around on his all fours for about seven years till so he came to his senses. I think about the prodigal son who wanted his stuff to go spend on his ways, and that's why he found himself in the pig pen, and he uh, came to his senses, it said, and went back home. And the father was looking for him, and he always looks for us if we'll come back. He's not going to beat us up and drag us back. We have to come back on our own. We have to make a choice. That's what we want to do. But the rich man, the riches will perish like the grass that passes away. The sun rises with a scorching wind and withers the grass and the flower falls off and the beauty of its appearance is destroyed. So too the rich man in the midst of his pursuits will fade away. Man, those gardenias are smelling so sweet. I've around some of those this week and such a sweet smell in others. Uh, it was amazing. I think Mickey was talking to me about what is it? it was a lemon tree that has such a such a unique smell to that as you look at it. Very, very different as you look at honeysuckles around in the mouth. Just so many things. Little things that God has done special for us, that mixture that no other, nobody could duplicate. God did it himself. But don't pursue those things. Pursue God. Blesses a man who pers perseveres under trial. Don't quit. Man, I know folks who've quit church, quit Jesus. <laughs> they quit this, they quit that. Um as I was saying, is there's not a perfect church. If you should find one, please don't join it and mess it up, you know, without a doubt. Uh, but we, we have to understand that God works in and through us, and he expects us to walk in humility with him. Uh, blessed is the man who perseveres under trial, for once he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life. I want it. I'm going to get it. I'm telling you. I mean, what I do, I don't do for me. I do it for him. I never forget old Mohama sitting about the third row back in the corner over there one Sunday. We had a house full of folks, and I was thanking her for all that she did for the Iwana kids. I want to just thank you for what you do for, for me. I think what I said. She said, I don't do it for you. I said, yes, ma'am, I understand. I do it for him. And if we do what we do for him, things will be okay. Uh, you don't do it for anybody else. You do it for him, and God will certainly take care of blessing you through it all. But he says, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Uh, and loving God changes everything, people. Uh, I was talked to another fellow this week. I'd visited with him about a week or so ago, and I'd invited him to church. He was commenting on the cars as he came by, saying you had a crowded church, and he already knew the story. And I said, I want you to come. He said, well, what about that dinner on the grounds? I said, we'll do one for you. I want you to come. I won't charge you anything. You check it out and see what's going on. 
Uh, but many, many people, as I say earlier, that we have a, a religion but no relationship. And it's a boring life if that's all that you've got. Just a couple of the verses I want you to look at. In verse 19, dealing with the word here and how important the word is. And I can't tell you, uh, don't worry, read the word. Read the word. Meditate on the word. Uh, just let God work it in and through you. It goes on in this for, uh, verse 19. It says, uh, This you know, my brethren, but let everyone be quick to hear. See if you do this. You probably fail the test. Be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. Now, most folks fly off the handle, open their mouth, and insert foot before they give any consideration to whatever's going on. But if you're a born-again believer, what comes out of our mouth comes out of our heart. And it's so, so important. And we have to be quick to hear. Quick to hear. Folks, folks have, listen, you don't know what folks are going through around you. you know, well, they were sure short and choppy. Well, how did, what did you do to help them? What you're looking at, how things going. But be quick to hear, slow to speak. Sometimes you just need to keep your mouth shut. In fact, the scripture, I found my verse in Proverbs. It says, even a fool is considered wise when he remains silent. I had to practice that over the years. Sometimes it's, there's a whole lot of difference between having something to say and saying something. And if you don't have anything to say, you don't need to say anything. You just need to be quiet. But be slow to speak and slow to anger. And you have to remember as Jesus was on the cross, as Stephen was outside the gate, Stephen being stoned, Jesus being crucified, both of them said, Father, lay not this sin to their charge. Jesus says, because they know not what they're doing. Uh, folks who are unredeemed can't act like Christians. They can't talk like a Christian. They can't walk like a Christian. You just can't do it. Christ in you is what changes that. But if you're a born-again believer, you're going to be slow to anger. You're going to be slow to speak. You're going to be quick to hear. Look, for the anger of man does not achieve the righteousness of God. I'm going to do God a favor. I'm just going to give you a piece of my mind. And most people who give you a piece of their mind, I've found over the years, they really don't have any despair. And they should really hang on to it, you know, because it just doesn't, doesn't do them any good. Uh, I have folks call and apologize to me all the time. I really do. Uh, and I, I'm straightforward with folks because I love people. And I want to speak the truth. That little sign we had out front said, He who is hated most is he who speaks the truth. True. I'm not concerned about you being my friend. Yeah. I do want to be a friend of God. I'm going to follow his commandments. If you and I can get along, that's good. But the word of God is so important. And, and the scripture said we speak truth to one another. We speak truth in love. And it hurts sometimes. Yes. Man, I've cried over some things I've done. I've had to go and seek forgiveness. And I'm so glad that I've grown through that. And we'll continue to grow. We, we won't get, get through growing until we find ourselves in glory. But the anger of man does not achieve the righteousness of God. And listen, it's amazing. Therefore, putting aside all filthiness. Do what? Think about that. I know some wretched folks. I know some wretched folks that go to church. I know some wretched folks that preach in pulpits. I know some wretched folks that teach Sunday school. None of them go here, of course. But, but I know some. And I'm telling you, it's amazing. Put aside all filthiness and all that remains of wickedness. In humility, receive the word implanted. When the word of God goes forth, it does one or two things. It's going to convict you. It's going to encourage you. It's going to build you up. And I, the, the thing about truth is it will always, listen, it will always make you miserable before it sets you free. Yes. But it will set you free. But it will make you miserable through the process. He says, in humility, receive the word implanted, which is able to do what? Save your souls. What about that? I just don't read the very word very much. You need to read the word very much. I'm just not smart enough to understand. Oh, yeah, if you're born again, you can understand it. The Holy Spirit will give you understanding. Don't worry about that. Get into it. Let it get into you. Look what he says here. He said, again, prove yourself doers of the word. Don't you love that? Let me prove this to you. It's like my wife said, I'm sick and tired of hearing you're going to do better. I'd like to see it. And I thought, shucks, what am I going to do now? It's my turn. Prove yourself doers of the word and not mere hearers who delude themselves. A lot of folks know a lot of scripture. They can rattle it off. That means absolutely nothing to them. It hadn't transformed them. It hadn't changed them from the inside out. But so important. For it, look, everyone who is a hearer of the word and not a doer is like a man who looks at his natural face in a mirror. How many times we, we're shaving and we'll get all the hairs up under your nose and around here and there and be sure it's off your ears and ain't hanging off too far and you want to look good and you go back and look again. I, my little granddaughter came up and showed me a little mirror that her mom had given her. It had a, uh, one of those magnified mirrors and then a standard mirror. And she said, look what mommy gave me. I said, mommy loves mirrors. We'd go shopping with her when she was a little kid and we couldn't find her. She'd be at the last center pole where a mirror was checking herself out. 
You know, and we all like to look at ourselves. There's nothing wrong with that. But you, you see that happen. But this mirror, he says, once you have looked at himself, he's gone away. He's immediately forgotten what kind of person he was. Isn't that something? The natural man. Natural face in a mirror. For once he, and listen, your, your worst enemy is not your wife or your husband or your mother-in-law or your auntie. Your, your biggest problem is what you look in the mirror in the mornings and what's looking back at you. And you should be able to look at yourself with some sense of gratitude that you're not all that you have going to be or not all you're going to be and you're not what you used to be. God's still working on us. But we shouldn't look at ourselves with a frown. We shouldn't look back, well, you know, I just, this is just the way I'm. If it is because God hadn't changed you. God changes you from the inside out. Good things happen. Once he looks at himself, he's gone away, he's forgotten immediately what kind of person he was. Look at this. Verse 25. But the one who looks intently, examine it. Dig into it. Not just blow over it. Get into it. What does it say? How, what does it mean to he He looks intently. He examines the perfect law. The law of liberty. Keep in mind, the scripture says that, that where, where the spirit is, there's liberty. There's freedom. If you're, and I know folks who go to church, they're just under this, this rigorous thing of legalism. And that is so sad. You know, Jesus wore out the disciples. They were getting on the different thing. And Jesus said, what is it to you? What they do or when I do, how I treat them. Don't, don't worry about it. You do what you're supposed to do. Don't worry about them other folks. I have enough trouble myself without trying to take anybody else, straighten them out. But the law of liberty, he says, abides by it. you got to do it. If you abide by it, not having become a forgetful hearer, but an effectual doer, this man will be blessed in what he does. I want to be that person. And I am that person an awful lot. Listen, God's good to me. If I die tonight, I'm telling you, God has been good to me. I'm just telling you, he's, he's been very patient with me. He's been very kind with me. He's been very long-suffering with me. Uh, and I, I, and I, want, I want to bless him. I want to reflect him in all that I do. And it takes time in that. And uh, the world's always going to squeeze us. And how we respond depends on what we have on the inside. And if Christ is in you, his spirit is in you, and your word is in you, you're going to bring forth the word. If anyone thinks himself to be religious, think about this. And yet does not bridle his tongue, say, what? What? Doesn't bridle his tongue but deceives his own heart, this man's religion is worthless. No good. I'm telling you, church are full of cussers and gossips and this and that and the other. And they say they love Jesus. Well, I would have to say they're confused. Because the scripture says, Jesus says, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. You'll walk with me. You'll talk with me daily. But he said, if you don't bridle your tongue, you deceive your own heart. This man's religion is worthless. It even gets worse. Look at a little further. This, 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 this will rattle your cage. This is pure and undefiled religion in the sight of God. Think about this. God the Father, to visit orphans. I had a guy call me from Hawaii yesterday and talked to him about trying to help him do some things over here. Uh, to build some orphanage homes here in the enterprise, some property he's bought, wanted to look at trying to do something with it. And I thought, that is so neat. But to visit orphans and widows in their distress. we got widows that folks don't even know they're widows. Had a little lady that came the last two Sundays we had church. And uh, I walked out of a store up the road. I went there and got me some peanut butter cookies and a cup of coal that Brother Mick. I know it's good for me. <clears throat> and I walked back out, and there was a cup laying there by the gas pump. Somebody had stepped on it, had been there a while. I picked it up. This lady came out in front of me, and I knew I thought I recognized her, but I picked that cup up and I threw it in the trash. And I meant at her, my pastor, is that you? I said, well, yes, how are you? You probably don't remember me. I said, I do remember you. She said, I'm so anxious to get back in church. I said, well, I am as well. And I said, please follow us on Facebook, and we'll be back here before two. But I thought about that. What would happen if I had not picked that paper cup and threw it away? What if I just walked on by it like it didn't really matter? I mean, really, little things. People see that. Picked up some trash, Pastor, is that you? Well, yeah, that's me. How you doing? And that's way below some folks to bend over and pick up a piece of paper, especially somebody else that may have cooties on it. I figure God's big enough to take care of me, irregardless of what's on that. Um, but anyway, he said, visit widows in their distress and to keep, look, keep oneself unstained by the world. How do you do that? Stay close to Jesus. Walk with him, talk with him. Mother Day is coming up. You better thank your mama if she's still here for loving you and taking care of you. Give her the, the honor that's due her. You will always owe her 
nine months room and board that you'll never be able to repay. And you thank God that she brought you into this world and be nice to her. But we think about that. I think about God the Father. I think about the love he has for us. I'm so grateful that he called, called Mary, a little, little servant girl, to be the father, uh, the, the, uh, the mother of her, his son Jesus. I mean, how, 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 look at that. What God does and how he puts it. But anyway, just take a look at this. The, the, the law is inflexible standards. The law. Uh, but Jesus says where the spirit is, there's liberty. And liberty is the absence of those inflexible standards. I, I always told me we, we have a lot of things going. We never know when we're going to change things or do something. I said, we've got to be flexible or we'll break. And I'm so glad that Jesus is flexible. I'm so glad that he loves me and he's mindful that we're mere dust. And uh, he, he loves you if you do talk ugly. But let me tell you something. He's going to keep working on you till you straighten things out, until you become a doer of the word. Many of you have heard the word over the years, time and time again, and it's not profit you anything because there's a book of Hebrews. If we don't unite it with faith, you've got to believe. And if you believe, it's going to change you, change you. I remember when I got saved at 14, the, the most drastic thing that happened in my life that night, the next day, other than being born again and forgiven of my sin, I had a few hells and downs I used occasionally and a few other things. But when God came into my life, my vocabulary changed from the inside out. Those next days, I was going to hang out with my buds. I was going to say when they were, it just kind of knotted up inside of me. It wouldn't come out because I was somebody new. And 2 Corinthians five seventeen was at work in me. Therefore, if Christ be in any man, he is a new creature. The old things pass away. Behold, everything becomes new. And I'm so glad that when we do still sin, that God is very much faithful to be there and forgive us. He's not going to let you off the hook. He's not going to say, well, you're just human. I understand. He's going to say, you need to repent. You need to change. So again, pray for our country. Pray for our governor. Pray for Miss Ivy, that God would give her wisdom and insight. Pray for Mayor Cooper, that God would give him wisdom and insight. For our council members, our county commissioners, those folks who help us in this city. I uh, just pray that blessings be upon them. The, uh, Brother Jones, our T.D. Jones, our, our police chief, and, and uh, pray for Mr. Sutton, our, our sheriff, and all the folks that help them do their job. Again, I love you. I appreciate you listening. Let's close with prayer, and if I can be of any help to you, let me know. Uh, if I've insulted you, thank God for that. If I've made you uneasy, I'm so grateful. Uh, if I've done something that's not according to the word, give me a call. I'll be glad to talk with you. Uh, but if you're convicted and uh, don't not listen to us anymore, you just repent. Turn in the right direction. Great things will happen. Father God, we thank you tonight for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for the power of the gospel. Father, I thank you that as we look into your word, it's impossible for us as believers to have a steady intake of the word and continue to sin violently. Father, all of us are all short of the glory of God from time to time. But, Lord, I'm so grateful that we have not missed the mark of salvation if we put our faith and trust in you. And, Father, I just pray for our brothers and sisters who are listening. I pray for those, Lord, that, that are not sure about their salvation. Lord, right now they can say, Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. I've been in church all my life. But, Lord, I know that I need Jesus in my life. I know something's missing. And that missing part is the Lord Jesus Christ, his Holy Spirit, and the Word of God. Father, I just pray tonight that they might seek your face. And, Lord, the transformation might take place in their life. And, again, Father, help us as the people of this great nation. Father, to come together to pray, to seek your face. And, Father, let your leadership go before us. Help us to pray for those in authority and help us to submit to them as best we can. The Scripture says as far as it depends on us to be at peace with all men. Some folks make it impossible sometimes. So, Father, help us to be mindful of that. And, Father, again, we love you. We thank you for your love for us. And we just pray your blessings be upon us as we leave this place. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.